This is the November 10th meeting of the Fire Station Building Committee. Um, we'll call to the, call the meeting to order. Uh, first agenda item, as always, is public comment. Uh, the only on? person with us on this uh, in the meeting is John Lemieux. Okay. John, no comments? No comments, John? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised after last night. I was hoping somebody might show up. But guess not. Okay, uh, second agenda item. Uh, please discuss the feasibility study progress. Um, so invite. You ready? Sure. <laughs> Ron, you want to come up and? Yeah, for sure. Um, Is there anything we need to bring up? Just on there? Um, I don't think we're going to need the screen okay. tonight. Um, I think we can just um, talk about an update to all of your questions right so last week i think the biggest question was what value is there in the existing building um, so we took the 2009 report that the previous firm had done um, and we sent that off to edg engineers design group our structural engineers along with all the existing plans and a bunch of photographs um, so they came to the conclusion that I think you all expect, right? So first of all, the building was built in the mid-60s, um, hasn't had any upgrades to speak of since it was built in the mid-60s. Um, their concern is a couple of things. Number one, it, it doesn't meet any current codes, right? So as soon as we go in and start messing with things, that could trigger bringing the building up just to code. In other words, and what I'm talking about is like the roof doesn't meet the current snow loads. Um, the exterior walls, as Kevin, you may have mentioned, are not reinforced. So what that means is we have to go and reinforce those walls. So what we're talking about is a lot of remedial work just to get it to perform, and it's going to be costly. So the next question, and that's to sort of repurpose it. So that doesn't have anything to do with Category 4 um, implications. So. You know, their recommendation, frankly, was, especially if we're gonna go in there and then gut it, so we're taking down a lot of the interior petitions and things like that. Um, your roof structure on the bays is actually not mechanically connected. Uh, it's, it's resting on those exterior walls. Um, so their two cents worth was, it is beyond its useful life now. And if you do, go in there and do all these modifications we're talking about. Is it a 50 year building? No, it's something that's piecemeal together, which is going to make it safe. Um, and how long it's going to last, we don't know. Now that's 100% structural analysis, right? That has nothing to do with the fact that the building's not insulated. Um, we did, Matt sent along a lot of your existing utility costs. So right now you're paying over $3 a square foot just in and we'll get into this deeper at a, at a future meeting but I, we did some real quick calculations on how much you're spending on that building and you know how much we think you could spend on that building so you know i think insulation on the roof insulation in the walls all of those things and then obviously the slab we've had trucks on and everything else if we repurpose that so just getting this to the point of repurposing i think and i sent the report out mm -hmm. to everyone you know, their, their reaction is it would probably be, um, and he's talking for the next 50 years, less expensive to just build them um, than to try to repurpose that in any sensible way. Now, with the reason we say sensible way is we know we can't use the bays for bays, right? <laughs> so, it, you know, that's where you kind of cross that line of does it make sense, you know? so. Could we use the bays as a big meeting space or something like that? Yes, but it's gonna be very costly to do that, and you're still dealing with a 1960s building. So, I think that answered kind of the three questions. Yeah. Just wanna add though, we still need to go through that exercise mm -hmm. of doing an additional renovation option so you can compare. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, you know, I, I know I personally agree that I think it's not gonna be worth, right the squeeze to, to really do anything to it, but I think it could be a cost to that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's what yep. drives it home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that cost would be, you know, the whole, like this is what it would cost to do the additional renovation piece of it, right? And then this is the cost of a new building. Right, exactly. Um, because I think 
finding that, what I was trying to get out of the structural engineers <clears throat> was, what's that incremental cost? You know, like how much is that to do? And they said it's just very, very difficult to put a number on that because you're not only uh, reinforcing the non-existing structure that's there, but you're also insulating it and bringing it up to, you know, all these other things that they just don't know. So it would be easier, I guess, or more telling to just say if this is our addition renovation project and it's X millions of dollars, and that's how it compares to this new project, which is Y millions of dollars. What's important is that what we want to be able to deliver to you is a 50-year building if it's renovated or if it's new. So all of that scope will be identified in some way that we try to capture those costs, even though it may be challenging. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk that through for a minute, if everyone will humor me. Um, I mean, what we're hearing is, is there's no value in the existing building. Correct. Right. So well, why exercise ourselves by pretending that there is to put on a, to put numbers on it that are going to be estimates until we actually take it to a level where it can be reasonably bid so I mean if I mean I nowhere in your explanation did I hear there's this piece of the existing building that brings some value to the table there wasn't any of that right all I heard was no value and it's going to cost as much if not more to make it usable let alone serviceable for the next 50 years. That is correct. But it just, I just think you, you want to have something that demonstrates that. Yes, we'll have the report, but a lot of people will say, okay, well, what does it really cost? Right? So it's just putting that, what does it really cost? And I know it's an estimate, but at this point it's apples to apples, right? Comparing uh, a study level Innovation versus a study level, level new construction. So, uh, I agree, it would be good to have numbers. I guess I just wonder what the value of those numbers is, but I guess. I try to help the public. I mean, we tell them all the things that are wrong with it. You know, we, don't, we didn't want to spend a lot of time studying something because we thought it was in such tough shape, but if we were to try to put a number on it, we're trying to help you understand why. Why it doesn't make sense? Why doesn't make sense? Right. When we say it's more expensive, how much more expensive is it? Yeah, I feel like if we just cease that exercise now, the public would be like, "Well, look, they grasped the first branch that said no, and just went on about their way, didn't like fully consider everything." Mm -hmm. Just yeah, concerned I, with the cost, but like we obviously have to get them the public on board. And I think it's easier if we have like it'd be easier for me to be like, "Well, that costs this and that costs that." Yeah, I think it'll be, to your point, I think it'll be important to have some sort of line item in, well, I mean, it's going to be in either estimate, but for, you know, unforeseen conditions or some contingency, mm -hmm. and that contingency is probably higher yes, it is. if you're renovating the building because you're going to uncover things that you didn't expect, yeah. whereas new build, maybe that's really only pertaining to the site itself rather than the site and the building structure. So. And I would also say that there's going to be more cost because of the phasing. The phasing is going to get a lot more complicated. It, what I mean by complicated is, you know, time consuming. Um, if we're doing an addition or renovation project, as opposed to building to knock it down and finish the site work. Will that estimate come with a timeline or is it just a numbers estimate? Mm -hmm. okay. No, because uh, to your point, time is money. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking a 16 month construction period and turning it into 26 months, that's a big deal. I guess if we end up renting that trailer, that could factor into the costs there as well. Correct. And just the general conditions for the for the contractor also, and you know, OPM designers, CA fees, and all that will be included in the uh, right the total project costs, mm -hmm. but uh, in the estimates that we're talking about. Right. Okay. Because we want to, like Don said, it's apples to apples, right? So you're going to be getting very similar furniture package, right? But you know, as, as Steve just said, the general conditions for the contractor because of time is going to go up. His time is going to go up. Our time is going to go up. Your time in terms of, you know, not having the building.
gets extended. So if you do decide to rent a trailer for three years or whatever, you know, that time, that rental could get extended beyond that too. So there's just a lot of things that go along with, um, you know, what Aaron said about what is the value of this? What, what are we talking about? All right, so when we talk about addition renovation, are we talking about the entire building or are we just talking about keeping the bay, the vehicle bays? Or we, I mean, or have you guys given that any thought yet? Like how is um, we, we haven't. We're, start, we're starting to work on that now. And it's a matter of, you know, what's, like for instance, in addition renovation, you get all new mechanical, electrical, fire protection, and plumbing, right? I mean, all that has to be redone. Because all of that, those systems are at the end of their useful life, or were back in 2009 when that report was written. So now they're well beyond it. Um, you know, so all of that stuff is new. So what we're talking about is anything that we do save, um, all of that needs to be replaced. So um, I, I think the easiest thing there is you want to use the whole building. Because otherwise you're getting into another set of phasing, right? Because if I take the boiler room away, but I don't take the rest of the building away, and it still needs to operate while they're in there. Now we've got temporary heating and temporary water and things like that. So um, that also, that's going to play into it. Like, what are we doing? And then all of this, the community is going to get to see what is this investment we're making, right? Because we're going to pay a certain amount of money. What are we getting back? Are we getting a a rebuilt 1960s building with a 1980s addition for half of that building? Or are we getting, you know, a new Category Four um, building now? It's going to last a long, a lot longer. Because I, I will say that I think in the structural report he said it's going to be very difficult to bring that building up to Category Four. Like that's just that's almost a non-starter. Like we'd have to start with we can repurpose this, but it's not built to the same um, safety risk, or I should say risk factor, right? Because it's risk Category Four. So that's just something that town needs to consider as well. You know. I do think uh, <clears throat> because of kind of what we're against with the previous history, I think even though we may know it's an exercise and you know, something that's not realistically going to happen, I think it's important to put it on the table. Just I think I you all have alluded to that, but I really do think that that's critically important actually to put on the table so people can see a what he what um, Mr. Hunt said that hey there's actually no value in this and for us to try to repurpose it or use it is X amount of dollars for us to still have something that really has limited to no value which you know means we're investing lots of money into something that has no value and essentially is at the end of its usable life the day we move into it which makes absolutely no sense but I think it's good for from the point of view of let the people in town see that and see it with their own eyes and put it on the table for them to be like, oh, let them come to that conclusion with the information as opposed to us saying, hey, we didn't do this because it just was a waste of time. Well, you know, we may know that and understand that, and, but they don't want to rather them come up to that conclusion themselves and to say, well, you know, we made that decision and then now they're not trusting the process to date, we've done this, you know, in a fashion that I think we've done above and beyond to try to be transparent and to try to exercise every piece of due diligence we can to, to do it the right way. And I think we need to continue along that path, even if it is seen as work that is, you know, we kind of know maybe isn't going to give us any results to change or move the needle, but it's going to be good enough for enough information for people in the town to look at it and say, all right, I can get behind this because they've unturned every stone. They looked at everything we could possibly do and this, that is just not an option. It's not a viable option on the table. I think they also need to understand that maybe most people do that you don't throw your house away after 50 years and say it's not good enough and I'm going right. to get rid of it and do it again. But this is different than that. There's yeah. things that you know have to be in a, in a facility like this that are you know just not the same, so uh, we have to approach it differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I certainly see the merit in what you're bringing up that I think, and like you mentioned,
which I think we all think is probably futile. But personally, I think we at least have to have something on paper that we can point to and say we at least reviewed it. Well, we're trying to build trust here, right? Right, and get people to come along with us. So, we've got to make sure we we try to plan for all of their questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so then, do we, I guess, what do we want to talk about next? Um, has it been any, any update on yeah, concept so layouts, building size? Yep, so the this, this site, um, we worked with um, Rich McCarthy, came to our meeting last week. Um, I shared some emails back and forth with him, um, essentially saying this is our understanding of what our meeting resulted in. Um, he's still reviewing some things, so we've set up a meeting again on Monday. Um, so that we're going to have a, a video call with him on Monday um, just because he's still looking at some things like for instance you know that 30-foot buffer we talked about um, he's already agreed that that's gone away on the church side as well as a 50-foot setback on the church side um, and so now we're kind of taking a look at well what does it mean on the east side which is the residential neighbor um, and on the south side which goes up against the woods, you know, kind of where your septic is. Um, because the more, you know, the more we can do the right thing in terms of our neighbors and our setbacks and our green, um, the more space we'll have for the building footprint. So that's the next thing on the agenda. And we're working on that now is, you know, what is our buildable area? So we've already gotten it extended all the way out to the church property. Um, we're doing some deed research right now to find out what the easement is sort of in the, um, the northwest corner of the site uh, because it says access and utility. So we're wondering, can we just pave it? We don't want to put any underground structures or anything like that in the easement, but what if we did some paving so that we could get you know, some vehicular access on that side? Um, so that's still a work in progress and we'll have more information on Monday, but it seems to me like we're getting pretty close. And in terms of the building size, I think Jason's gotten it you know, to a place where we're under 29,000. So we're somewhere at 28 and change right now. Uh, we've got two new concepts um, that we're trying to get through so that we can share with you and the addition and renovation that we're um, working on so that we can give that to you so you can see those, those ideas. Um, but the good news is, like we said at the prior meeting when we talked about programming, um, is the idea of how, how tight can we make the building, right? Make it functional, make it sustainable, and um, give you the biggest bang for your buck. So that's the process we've been going through right now. And we have shared those early concepts with Gordon, though. Mm -hmm. So we're going, we're in the next generation now. So we're mm -hmm. taking a lot of good feedback, pushing those further along, and seeing if there's any other ways we can look at this, too. So we'll have it to share with you guys next week. And the, the meeting we had with the working group when we shared some of this was really to find out what can go on the first floor and what can go on the second floor. That was sort of that exercise of spatial adjacencies um, because the more we can put on the second floor, the tighter the building gets, the smaller the footprint gets, um, and we're obviously working within those site constraints. So it was, a, it was a really good meeting, and I think the chief and the staff have been doing a great job. We're really thinking about what do they absolutely need um, I think the word want is no longer being, 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 being discussed. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it really comes down to what's going to allow us to operate. So um, in the discussion we had last time where you were applying that, I think it was like a 30 percent factor. <coughs> the grossing factor, yes. The grossing factor. So now does that go away as you're laying all these out? Because now this is like the true square footage or are you still? It, it doesn't go away, but it gets out? reduced. Yeah. as we make the building layout more efficient um, and, and you know some of the areas we try to eliminate corridors where we can um, that helps really reduce that number especially in the um, down by the apparatus base and the other operational areas we make everything as tight as we can so that number is is coming down a bit um, it certainly won't go away you know but our goal is to get it from 30 down to you know, low to mid 20s okay is that is that an average across the whole building? I would imagine the apparatus is probably smaller. That's, yeah, it, that's exactly right. It's an average. So if you go to the apparatus bay area, it's almost zero. Right? In some of the other areas, it's much bigger. Okay. 
but to answer your question, the, the square footage we're coming up with right now is the actual building design. Right? Yeah. So we kind of, you know, that spreadsheet that adds up all what we call the net usable thing <coughs> has that grossing factor on it. But we, like, we're not using the spreadsheet anymore. Like, the spreadsheet has gotten to the uh, point where it's almost complete because we're still modifying the size of a few spaces. Um, but when we come back and say, you know, here's a concept diagram of the building. The square footage we're giving you is the gross square footage of that building. And, and that will be true of the addition and renovation option. Yes. And typically what happens is there's inefficiencies in the existing building and how you make connections and whatnot. So you may find the grossing factor is a little higher there uh, based upon how it circulates and whatnot. So the shape of that building may not right. be perfectly efficient for yeah. the programs. So the, the programs will end up reflecting the building plan as opposed to just being a program with some other uh, grossing factors attached to say, and the different program sizes based upon the actual option. Um, I guess we can talk about it with, with when we review the schedule update. But So you think for, for the next committee meeting we'll have layouts to review? I do. I think for the next committee meeting, I'd like to do two things. I'd like to talk about sustainability and the designs that we're at. Because I think no matter what design, they have to meet the stretch code in Massachusetts, which is adopted by the town. And then we just want to talk to you a little bit more in depth with, like, what are your operational goals, right? So we did send along something from Eversource, which is their Path 3 incentive program. Um, they actually reached back out to me and said, why don't you, and it, again, we'll do this for the next meeting, but um, why don't you talk to the owner about doing a net zero building, which would qualify for our path one program. And they speak much better than this about this than I do, but um, there are monies involved in that. So, you know, this isn't like getting a rebate for a light fixture. They take a holistic look at the entire project, figure out how much energy you're going to save over the life of the building, and they pay out you know, 50 cents or a dollar or a dollar 25 per square foot, um, depending which program your particular project fits into. So um, those two programs, Path 1 and Path 3, those are for buildings that are under 100,000 square feet, but more than 20,000 square feet. And they're obviously commercial buildings. It's not something, you know, it's not a residential thing. Um, and they're looking, you know, basically to save as much energy as they can as a utility. So. You know, that next meeting will be those two big discussion points. Do you think you're able to get there with just rooftop solar? Or do you have to do like a canopy as well? Um, we, it's something we need to figure out. Like, so um, one of their criteria is that we have an energy charrette with them, right? So I would invite, obviously, everybody who wants to be involved in that because I think it's a great informational thing coming right from Eversource. Um, they ask us to target an EUI of 25. So what that means is energy use intensity of a building. Um, they kind of make that benchmark and they say, all right, let's try to hit this. You know, Now fire stations use a lot more energy than, than other types of buildings. And so we would start with that benchmark, have that energy charrette with them. Um, you know, and we would talk about what the possibilities are. Our engineers, electrical and mechanical, anyway, would be part of that charrette. Um, to talk to them about that, but um, and then they make that determination. Um, so, like for instance, if it was, you, you know, first thing is to take a look at the concepts and say how much roof area do we have, right? So if you put solar on there, but there's other renewable energies too, right? So there's geothermal, that could be considered. Uh, there's biomass, that could be considered. Um, Air source heat pumps, believe it or not, somehow qualifies a renewable. I'm still in the dark about how that is possibly renewable, but you know it's on their list. <laughs> um, and so when they talk about renewable energies, it doesn't just all of a sudden mean solar panels. You know, um, solar hot water. You know, we pre-treat solar hot water by running it through a collector on the roof, and you know, that's typically a system that pays for itself within 10 years. If you remember from our interview, we said there's some things you're going to get that are required by code. Some things have a, a quick payback. So solar hot water is usually a pretty quick payback. Um, but so those renewable energy systems are something that Eversource will definitely, you know, bring up and tell you what your options are. And as we go through that, you know, we have a lot of experience in sort of saying, okay, let's start identifying some of these things that are worth identifying. Um, 
So, like you may find it's more cost effective to spend $300,000 on a geothermal system, which is going to drive the cost of your building down, or drive the energy requirements of your building down, than to spend $300,000 on solar. You know, because once that geothermal system is put in, you've driven down the energy of the building. If you've got solar in 10 years, you're probably going to get panels that perform a little bit better and it'll be a little bit cheaper, right? Because the price of solar is heading down. And then there are also power purchase agreements that we could talk about where the utility comes in and you recognize a 26, well, this, if it were this year, it'd be 26%, but you know, maybe by the time this gets built, it's a 18% discount, right? But then you have to, you know, work out that PPA with the uh, with someone like Revision Energy or Sundog Solar or somebody like that. So lots of different discussions to have on the energy piece of it, um, but we just want to touch a little bit on it when we're talking about the designs of the building, because the designs of the building that we're coming up with are going to have a different amount of envelope, right? So like Don just said, you this the area. Of an, of an addition renovation is probably going to be a little bit more because it's not as tight and purpose designed, you know, around that program. So how much is that envelope, right? Because that affects where your heat losses are. And so, you know, that affects how energy efficient the building is. Um, maybe if we, well, we'll jump to schedule. I mean, the next, the next item we had was the sewer project impact on the site. Is that something mm -hmm. you've... Yep, so we reviewed that with Rich McCarthy. Um, we put a plan together and actually dropped that right on the plan. Um, and Rich immediately said, that's a placeholder. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's, let's design the fire station. Um, let's see how everything works out in terms of layout of the fire station, because there may be different places on the site that the pump station building can go and the underground structures can go. Um, and he also suggested that it's probably going to be a project that doesn't happen before the fire station is well underway. You know, uh, uh, to, to that um, we're trying to decide whether to take the next step and dedicate about half a million dollars of the ARPA funds the town's going to get ha is getting uh, has gotten to take that uh, design to the next point by which we have enough information to decide whether or not. The community wanted to consider setting up a sewer district and and betterments and all that sort of thing and refining the design to know better exactly where things need to go and is the sewer line going to go down main street or behind properties before it gets to the fire station and force main after that and what happens over on the green county school and thinking <coughs> whether the town's ready to do that so it's kind of a chicken and egg situation because sewers needed to really um, meet the zoning goals of the B1, and what properties could have, but they need sewer to get there. So that's kind of a, a tough decision at the moment. But we're working on it. And you know, his big message to us was, don't throw away your septic system. <laughs> yeah. Keep, you know, keep the idea that you're connecting whatever project, whether it's new or at Reno, you're connecting it to the septic system. And our civil engineer is looking through the septic system right now. He's he's actually working with the DEP under Title V um, to find it. And I got to get some information from Matt. I got to get like how much water the building used in the last two years. What was the annual water use? Um, so that he can get that over to DEP and they can, you know, tell us if we're good with the occupants. So we get that from Public Works. Okay. Do they take into account that like they build like thousands of gallons after a fire? Like that's not water that is being circulated back like typically through a building that'll end up in the septic system. Like mm -hmm. we're using like after we do a training or after a fire, we're gonna fill 3,500, 4,500 gallons of water at one time. You keep a record of that? The, not this, not well we not from the uh, inside the not fill inside, hydrant. Inside, but I from the outside you hydrant you do, but we don't we don't use that very much. But does that water run through the meter? So we don't so record. we won't need the water rates. We're gonna do it off the off the occupancy calculations. <laughs> 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 um, so that that so your water bill like I don't know how this works, but does the town I mean you pay a water bill? We do. Month? Yeah. 
So I'd say P Public Works is the one who manages that okay. the meters, and I mean, Matt pays the bill. Right. But okay. So yeah, I mean, if you're filling your trucks, that's obviously not going into the subject. So. And the reason he's working with DEP is um, I know your health board signed off on it in 2009, but the reality is everything has to get approved um, and signed off by the DEP before the, the town even sees it. Um, so, okay. So, so the takeaway on that is that we need to at least make some accommodation that there might be a, some sort of pump station there in, in the future. Right. We're just not going to know what that is or what the size of it. Or right. And the goal is, like, let's say let's say we design a building that has, you know, a nice new apron, right, that gets the fire trucks to the street. Well, we want to design the building in such a way knowing about the sewer. Because if it's done two years, five years after the building is built, you don't want to be ripping up your new asphalt area to, you know, connect to the sewer. Um, so that's just something that we want to, you know, work with Rich and his team to just make sure we're doing things the smart way. Uh, schedule update. Um, we're on schedule. So, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so if we could just dig into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is out of date, but it, this had complete study December 21st. Correct. That's so what we're targeting for a select board meeting. That's right. their second meeting in December. So that would have cost estimates in it? Everything. So okay. that's good. So the deliverable we're targeting, and we're going to, I mean, you know, everything's going according to plan, but i got to knock on wood. So December 15th, you all would get a draft report. Um, and these reports that we're issuing is going to have, you know, all the parts and pieces that we've been presenting. So. It'll have the blurb about the structural integrity of the existing building. It'll have the blurb about the insulation. It'll have information on what energy you're using right now in the existing building and how that compares to what we're predicting for the new building. Um, it'll have the designs uh, that were explored. It'll have the preferred design, you know, the one that you all decide, you know, that's, what, that's where we're going. It'll have all those cost estimates we're talking about. And it'll also have the schedules, so if we go with you know, like the committee decided to go with option B, just saying, right? So that would have a schedule assigned, you know, option B project schedule would also go with option B design. Um, but, you know, A and C would also be in there so that they can see how that compared. Um, it would also have the rhyme and reason as to why the selection was made in the report. Um, and then there'd be an energy analysis, um, sort of some mechanical and electrical narratives that talk about what the systems are type inside the building. It'll have sort of an exterior envelope. It'll have a finish um, narrative that basically says, you know, these are the finishes we're talking about. So the chief and a few members of the staff went to visit some stations today. And we got a good idea of what they're looking for in terms of their station. We got a few more to go do, but um, all of that information that I just mentioned will, will be in there, um, as well as all the soft costs, right? Not just construction, but what we're targeting for furniture. Um, what the chief is putting together is sort of an inventory of things that he might he can reuse, you know, that we don't have to buy new for the new building. He can just move them over. Um, so once we get that, we'll take a better look at some of these soft costs. Um, and we have a meeting with Steve and his group on Friday, um, this Friday, to talk about, you know, overall project budget and what we're seeing on other projects and how that compares and, and what we're what we're spending on other projects. Um, so, so you mentioned at the next meeting you would have probably a couple concepts that we would review, mm -hmm. and are those two are those concepts of new builds, renovation, both? I'm hoping all three. All three. Yeah. So right now we've been working on two completely different types of new building. Right. Yeah. One really kind of sits on the street and comes back into the site. Uh, the other one is built towards the back of the site, more compact, like we were talking about. Um, and then the, the third option we hope to bring um, is going to be what's an addition renovation look like. And is the cost estimate of pricing out all three of those options? Not for next week. No, no, understood, but for the, for the report. For the report, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
when you say next week, you mean next meeting. I mean next meeting. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's um, the 17th, sorry. Oh, whatever, no. Well, so we should talk about that. Yeah, yeah, so, because the next meeting would be the night uh, before Thanksgiving. Oh, so, we should move that. That's where, that's where I was kind of going with all this, is like, from that, whenever we have our next meeting, how much time do you need to deliver the report? Because let's say we don't meet that Wednesday and we say we'll just meet the following Wednesday, the first. The second. Yeah. No, first. The first. first. Sorry. Is Sorry. that enough time now to deliver a report or do we need, um, I don't the meeting the week of Thanksgiving is going to be, I mean, I, I can speak for myself personally. I will not be here. Mm -hmm. I can be remote. But I will not be in Massachusetts. So let me ask you this: Is it possible to meet next week? Now that I slipped and said next week already. <laughs> <laughs> the seven. Because so I don't want to put so much pressure on you all, like you know, on December first or second, to say you need to make a decision. You know what I mean? Well, that's where I was going with this: is because you're giving us three options. Are we making a decision on those three options? It, it sounded like almost all three of those options are going to be presented in the report anyway. Right. So is it just a meeting to review what you've come up with and mm -hmm. make comments on it before the estimate's finalized? Yes, and that's what. So that we can think or do we need to the right path? Yeah, or do, are we picking something and then you're pricing that out and, and the pressure's really on to, no, to we, pick we, something? No, we, we would recommend that we have a, a, you know, a desire to have you actually comment on all three. Yeah. Let us go back and fine tune all three. Then come back and say, okay, we've heard your comments, we've listened to you. Um, and I know we're doing this at the working group, but you all have your opinions too, right? So once you've had a chance to see it, comment on it, and when we can adjust that, then we can go back and say to our cost estimator, you know, why don't you start estimating these? Because the next step now is they're gonna wanna make a decision. And quite frankly, I suspect that decision wants to be made after you've seen what options one, two, and three cost? You know, um, that way there you're making a, a decision not only on the energy performance, the design itself in terms of the operational aspect of it, but you're also making a decision on you know we want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars more on this option because it's going to save us this much money over 30 years, or we want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars less on this option for whatever reason. You know, and so you have that opportunity to see what is that investment and that, how does that work. That decision we made somewhere around December 15th. It could also be made at the 21st at the select board meeting. Yeah, right. I, mean, well, that, I think, that, we, that, I think that, we need to go in with, yeah. we these are the three, we, we recommend this one. Yeah. yeah. Right, but we can meet on the 1st and we can meet on the 15th. Yeah. And give you two rounds of comments before the 17th. Before the, the 21st at the select board meeting. Yeah, but I need right, to but you're, you're planning on delivering a draft on the 17th. Right? Yeah. So we could comment on whatever you're presenting to us on the 1st. Yeah. We could comment on it on the 15th. Okay. You have a day and a half or whatever you need to deliver it on the 17th. Sure. You're delivering a draft on the 17th, right? <laughs> yes. I guess that's where I was going was that the cost estimator, to me, that's, I mean, certainly the layout is a big deal, but yeah. the cost estimator's got a pretty, like, yeah. Tough job here that he's got to price out three options. Are we giving him enough time? Yeah. Well, so we're saying the 15th that. and the 17th is enough time, so then we meet on the 1st and the 8th. Yeah. Yeah. 1st and we, the 8th. So we, we can definitely first meet and the on the 1st and the 8th. That's not a problem. Right. It's just it's just my, you know, neurotic self is saying if we had one more meeting, which might be next week, um, is that? Yeah, we're, we're kind of sidebarring over here. Yeah. If, if you guys are available next next Wednesday, we, we could make that work. Which actually, yeah. if we did next week, and then we did the first and the eighth, or, right. I think that would work out great. Right. That, that just, it just, you know, there's a lot that goes into this, right? <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's a, and I don't want to be in a situation where, you know, you, you say, well, you know, we need this. We need more information on something, you know. And I want to give. Go ahead, no. Class I is the door. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and I want to give Eversource an opportunity, um, and that doesn't have to be on a regularly scheduled meeting. But I want to give Eversource the opportunity to 
chime in on what we're doing so they can tell, because that's real money. Like that's money that they're going to give to the town. So um, it's a good opportunity to hear their comments and then decide do we comply with what their requirements are to get Thanks, know, Jack. this money that we're talking about. Um, well, I'm all for next week and the first on the 8th. I just came back next week. I'm unavailable on the 8th, but that doesn't matter, obviously. I mean, I was almost going to say the 8th could be TBD if, if, we're, if we're meeting on, if we're able to meet next week and then the 1st. So, Blythe, could we do this a different way? Could we send to you? No, I'm not playing tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Back to the 23rd. So, I'm, I'm so I can't out. put, so I'm not using the cash. Next week doesn't seem like it's really going to work out. No, so well, I mean, <laughs> if I deputize Erin to work with Amanda and give her what she needs, she could post it on Monday by 6 o'clock for Wednesday. Yeah. I just. But we're going to be down you, we're going to be down Erin. I'm at the firehouse Wednesday night. Right, so here's what I'm thinking is if we send this stuff electronically, you can all like you don't hit reply all, right? Oh no. Right, right. right. So <laughs> you don't you don't hit reply all, but if we send it out electronically, then you'll have an opportunity and you'll have an opportunity and you'll have an opportunity to look at your convenience, you know, look at it, think about it, comment on it, send whatever questions back to a gatekeeper, that one person, not reply all. Those comments could then be sent to us and we could, you know, address those comments. So on the first, and then we discuss them. And, on the and first. then you discuss them on the first. Yeah, you know, I think because that's a good idea. And this way here, like if you have a very strong opinion on one of the options, and you're talking about it, and you have a very strong opinion on another one of the options, we get that out. That's likely by the way. We kind of get that out through the, through like let's say it's going through um, Chief Kenny, then it's perfect because now we get all the comments. We're addressing all these comments. When we come back, it's more of a presentation of option one, these are the pros and cons based on all the information that we've heard. Option two, these are the pros and cons. I would suggest, if Steve doesn't mind, that all the comments go to him. Because, oh, just because, I mean, um, um, Amanda's not in, I mean, I would say her, but she's not in, say, on a, on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And so if someone didn't get them until then, they might not, you might. If you wouldn't mind compiling and being the forwarder in chief, that would sure. keep the information flowing. And, that, and you're not a member of the committee, so you're, there's no violation for you to get the stuff. <coughs> I do it. I'm just not going to be accessible. But I can't send it to everybody. You can't distribute at the same time. time. No. You uh, can send it to everybody. Yeah. Say, do right. not reply all. Reply only to me. Right. We can send the. But can he send everybody's comments? He can. Right. To yeah. Dory Whittier. He'll be sending the comments to me. Right. He's simply going to gather and forward. Right. So you send it all to him. Yeah. He sends it to everybody. They get back to him directly, and he gets back to you. Right. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of electronic volley, but. Right. And you just have to remember, just don't yeah. reply all. Right. So all you're replying to is Steve. And I'll, I'll do it in such a way that he'll get an email that says option A. Right. It'll have an attachment with option A. We'll have a little narrative about it. Um, and then you'll get a second email, option B, a little narrative about it. Addition renovation, option C, a little narrative. And, you know, everybody can comment. And we, when we reconvene on the, on the first, yeah. we could have a pretty good productive meeting. Yeah. So we'll get the concepts on the 17th or, or, the, or the end of that week, the 19th? Um, I mean, working with Jason, we could probably send out one option a couple days later, send out the other option. I mean, as these things get, yeah. Wrapped up that to the point be where we're ready, you know. Yeah, don't wait for all of them. No, yeah. no. I, it's almost easier to digest if mm -hmm. they come in at one time. Anyway. Yep. Yeah, and we'll, yep. It depends on the feedback we get from the working group also. Mm -hmm. If there's minor stuff, we can have it right, right out. Will the concepts have the floor plans? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Site plan, floor plan. They may not have any massing yet, but they're going to have the floor plans. You can see the square footage. You can see how things are laid out. You can see how things are working, um, and comment on them, and just you know, use your mind's eye to know it's going to be a beautiful building, no matter what, on the outside. And then, you know, by the week after that, we'll have massing. John has got ready. his hand up. John, are you there? He's just saying hi. 
It's just saying hi. Okay. Well, that is high school. I don't know if I. Uh, I think this is the same situation I had the last time with how to make my. Hold on, John. Make my. Okay, you're looking right at me. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, the guy who saw this the last time, I just don't remember what I needed to do with my settings, right? I did that, and it says it's. John, can you, can you talk again? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Hey, it's great. All right, great. Um, just a suggestion, guys, if, regarding the public meeting portion of this. If when Dorm Whittier sends something out, if they can send it to Steve and I and to you, Bly, and then Bly and copy the rest of the committee, it's impossible for someone to reply all and get us into any issues. That's true. So it's just a... Yeah, we've, we've done that before on some other jobs that it's work what we're doing big um, you know big rollouts of uh, committees just a, just a thought that way that way it completely prevents the mistake from happening and you end up with you know 14 people getting a reply all kind of thing yeah you want to do that yeah, I would actually not put me on. I'll put no. me on as a blind copy too because as a member I don't want to. Yep. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll just do the right thing. Okay. Thanks, John. So, so John. Wow, that's a good class that started. Well, if someone didn't double swipe the door every time someone wants to come in. So, John, can you hear me? Yes. This is Ron. Um, I think what Don suggested is we'll, we'll send everything to Steve and then he can do the blind copy thing. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Elaine, Thank you. are you able to open the door? Double swipe? Them? So, that will start coming out next week. Yes. No, Sometime. I didn't get done after yep. six And then you want comments back by um, yeah, just a rough timeline? You know, really, any time before the first, because when we meet on the first, yep. we'll have everybody's comments. Um, and we're not going to start changing the design until we had an opportunity to talk to everybody about everybody's comments. Yep. Um, now, the working group, you know, we're still going to meet next Wednesday. Uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Um, so, that, so, that, <laughs> so that's a question for the working group, too. I mean, you know, we don't have to meet next Wednesday. I know you were trying to set up um, some more fire station visits, but... Um, I have the next calendar and sharing with my staff that we're doing every Wednesday. And the next Wednesday, you're expecting to meet. So. I think, I think it would be good. Yeah, I think it would be yeah. good, Ron, to yeah. present it to the working group next week. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure. I don't know if the chief's going to be on the right. Sure. I mean, Everybody travels for Thanksgiving, so. Oh, um, next week is next, next week. Next, next, next week is not Thanksgiving. Next week is not Thanksgiving. Sorry, it's the fall. <laughs> so we're definitely meeting next week. <laughs> Getting all confused. Um, so yeah, so we're definitely meeting next week uh, with the working group, and we've got a lot to talk about there because that's the first discussion about both energy and design and what the impact is that both have on one another. And I think we can. You know, I can speak with you guys to see if there's another like Monday or Tuesday sure. to do a quick visit to Walpole and yeah. Franklin. Cause sure. I, I talked to their chiefs, and you know, we can hit those on a different day. And maybe, mm -hmm. so that's yep. we'll, we'll, we'll maybe come earlier on next week. Yeah, we, yeah, or earlier next week too. Yeah, yeah, that's fine yeah, too. Like one o'clock or something. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll do that. Right. So you can you can be our proxy for that meeting. Um, but just in terms of schedule, I think everything's going along great. I think the, the chief and the staff have been fantastic in terms of letting us know exactly what they're thinking and, and what they want. Um, what they need. What they need, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that, that's good. I just wanted to make sure, because I, I, I knew that we probably weren't going to meet on the 24th if that wasn't going to blow a hole in what you were trying to do. Right, so I think that the so electronic next week is a good workaround. So we are meeting, the building committee is meeting the building next, committee. next Wednesday versus the 24th. No, the no, working so group's meeting. The meet working Wednesday. group will meet. But so the building committee is meeting. The building the committee won't, won't meet again until the first, but we'll okay. review what comes out electronically yep. until then. Right. And maybe the 8th. And maybe the 8th. I'll have a room reserved just to make sure we have one. I'm not sure we're going to this one or that one, but. I think it's probably a good idea. Yeah, 
fifteenth seems like it's going to be cutting it real close if you're that issue is yeah, two days I, later. You know, the everything's just going to be better. We're going to be better off if we just meet on the first and the eighth. Yeah. Um, just there's a lot for you guys to consider and to decide. Yeah, and that's good because we're not meeting the twenty second. Likely not meeting the twenty ninth. So. I just won't. I'm not available for Zoom. I'm at a conference in Pensacola, so I won't be available the eighth. Okay. So is anyone else not available? What's what you say? Not really for do anything. Just my personal thoughts, um, you know, and we did Medfield and Sharon fire department today. Uh, both are fairly new projects. Sharon is about three years old. Uh, Medfield's about what is that, five. Uh, you know, there are some um, obviously some things where we have to do. You want to try the double swipe or for NFPA? I'm just kind of um, one one thousand. NFPA standards have been updated right. since both of those were completed, so. There's areas and spaces that we have to include that, Thanks, you know, or, or separation of spaces that, that is added space that we have to have based off of that. But again, uh, from the standpoint of um, finishes, um, even the, the way the building layouts and things are, uh, you know, they both had a lot of pros and cons. Um, I think for me, I like the, the layout and the kind of the tightness and flow of the Sharon uh, fire station headquarters. Um, the administrative space is very well, well laid out. Uh, you know, and we saw, I think, ways to possibly, you know, shrink some of those spaces and make them even more efficient um, by, by doing this, which was, you know, and Sharon had a uh, bulk storage area that was kind of right in the flow of the admin space where they had a ton of their files um, which were easily accessible um, uh, which which I really liked um, you know some of the uses of uh, flexible spaces if you will uh, the mezzanine space in both places actually was very uh, you know very well designed to accommodate uh, supplemental storage as needed, but also uh, training uh, various types of evolutions. Uh, so those are very positive. Uh, as far as the living quarters, uh, you know, the design of the Metro Station is, is nice, but I think the, the finish and layout of the Sharon Station was more along the lines of what we were looking for. It had the actual setup of the uh, four lockers outside of the uh, room, so you have your individual bunks and the four lockers entering in that space, so we actually got to see what that space would look like, uh, which was actually really nice. Uh, the flow and the openness of like the kitchen, day room, and uh, dining area, we think you know, uh, it was very nice in, in terms of how it was laid out in the way you know, people have, it's open, but there's ways that people can be in individual spaces without it having to be this huge, expansive space. I think Medfield was a bigger space, but none of us liked it as much because it didn't have quite the flow or homey, intimate feel, if you will. So, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, I'll let my staff share. I think the visits were very positive. It allowed us to put our eyes on some of these spaces and get a comparison some of the spaces that are proposed um, in our program and to see, okay, this is what a 600 square foot, uh, you know, physical fitness room looks like. Uh, we were able to see one that was smaller and see that, you know, Sharon in, ended up, even though their station is new, they have like three separate spaces that they kind of modified and converted into fitness spaces because the one that was designated was made too small and you can't move in it. So where Medfield was, about the size that we have, and it's 
it, it accommodates them, it works. And the guys talked about how they use it daily and regularly, and it, it's good. So uh, able to get some insight and questions, even down to like the access. And Medfield uh, firefighters were commenting on how they have the FOB access, and that's it. And Sharon, the chief, was like, it's imperative you have the FOB plus the, the code. And I noticed on every door, they didn't just have a FOB reader. They had the FOB reader was integrated into the push button code. So, you know, you had all of that kind of, those little insights. Um, we also got to look at both of their uh, training slash community rooms, uh, both of which were about the size of ours. I think Midfield's is a little bigger. But um, even with that, you know, Sharon's was a little about the size we were looking at. And we got to see what, you know, that size room is and looks like, and uh, you know, really, you know, open our eyes to, yeah, we, you know, we, we kind of estimated or, or did things, kind of seeing on seeing it live, you know, from what's on these spreadsheets, it was actually very telling because I've been in meetings in that training room and sharing where it's been, you know, 20, 30 people, and felt like, okay, this is comfortable, but the Build, the room is designed to accommodate 40, and that's kind of what where our room was in kind of that size range. And it, I was like, wow, that space goes away really fast when we put bodies in it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'll let, let them comment because I think the, the living spaces were the things that obviously, and the operational space, they both had, I think, a positive things. I think the overall feel of sharing was a little more. Homey and intimate, if you would. I just I liked it because the firefighters were there, and it was nice to like look at the space, saying, "Look, okay, this room is a little bigger than we need, but this room is too small." You know, and then the storage. I think everything was storage. You needed more storage, and the mezzanine. And then you saw what the different storage rooms. Like the chief said, they had a weight room design, and they thought it was going to be big enough, and then it wasn't. So they have to have another room that was for storage. Um, that they ended up making another weight room. But it was nice to hear their comments, the do's and don'ts. I think that definitely the storage was one that came up a lot. Like, you know, the uh, the EMS supply room in the Sharon station, they were like, oh, they're too small. Uh, our, some of the, I won't say ancillary storage, but like, you know, where they wanted to put their fire prevention stuff in storage, they needed more space. Like storage, it, it became apparent storage is obviously something that's very important. But typically, that's one of the first things that's cut when you're trying to fit something within. But like both departments were like, even though Medfield building appears to be huge, the fire side of it isn't that. It's not that expansive. It's a huge building, and it does look. It has a very, you know, I guess it's a big ostentatious kind of look to it. The, the bell tower, the clock tower, and stuff. But really, once you get in, it's very functional, and it's not. What it not is not what it appears on the surface in terms of like it's very functional, very well thought out, very well laid out. There's some things that we recognize that we don't like the locker room. Like the Medfield has a locker room. We don't want to do that. There's a large commitment of space in that floor plan that's committed to a locker room where we saw that you can kind of shrink the footprint of the floor plan by doing the four lockers in front of the walls, which is I think good. You know, it's a good thing. Okay. Plus, functionally, it's better for them, you know, when they have somebody coming in for coverage or that has to leave early on a shift or somebody coming in at midnight to relieve someone, you don't have to wake everybody up or disturb anyone. You know, it, it makes it really functional. So, you know, those kind of things. It was really good to put eyes on some of the conceptual ideas that they had brought to the table. Uh, and to see them actually live in person. Uh, and like you said, with firefighters working, I think the reason, you know, Sharon, their staffing level is, is at seven, plus all the admin is still there. So we really got to see, you know, the interaction and ask questions like, how's the flow of this admin space work for you? Like, uh, with the chief and the deputy chief and their admin assistant, uh, you know, and had good that information. Of the fire station tour, and the, I had to leave the meeting early. The, the public meeting. Public meeting, yeah. I would say, you know, it was, uh, 
I think people, there was there was a few conservation is that, oh, so that uh, they came wanting some information, and I believe they received that information. And uh, I know there was one or two. I think it was maybe two couples in particular that kind of had they had an idea in their head, and by the time they left, they were like, "Oh man, it's obvious. You all, this is needed." Like it was one of those like their eyes were open to you know kind of some of the obstacles and things that personnel are overcoming kind of day to day and they got to see you know the overburden of situations I think them pe people begin to put their eyes on the bumpers back in underneath each other um, you know we, we started the tour going through the trailer and by the time they got back to the bay all the vehicles were in and you could see oh wow like the bumpers are literally touching um, so I think it opened some people's eyes to it hopefully we'll get you know more people to attend in some ways, I felt like it was uh, it was really good, but some of the people that were there aren't the people that we need to no, come they, they because they were already stuff. proponents or supporters. Yeah. I think we have maybe four people that kind of maybe were on the fence or weren't proponents, but the rest were. I, I counted 12 residents, but I'm including two members' wives and one child. <laughs> <laughs> and then the videographer, which I'm, is sort of separate um, person, but, yeah. but that 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 was that was the count. So. Not not unexpected for the first the first going. I do think there's kind of a buzz out there. Though. Um, there were even a few citizens of town meeting last night. That, you know, I was going to say it was brought up a couple yeah. even so before I went up. Um, at least at least one person has to comment anyway. And I think once we finish this. The, the study and we have a concept that and when people you know start to see what it might look like and what it might cost that will raise the interest level just a little bit. A dollar something. Might get some public comments. <laughs> just a few. But I mean hey come you know if you don't believe us please come see. Yeah. How was your speech? Oh last Very night good. I nailed it. <laughs> he did. He did. He did also. He was concise. Nailed it. That's right. I was sitting there and I was the third one after Kevin Calkin spoke and the Energy Committee spoke. I'm like, oh, geez, I don't have that much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think it was important. You know, it was, it was just, it was personal. It was, it was you know, down to earth. Yeah. And um, you weren't trying to do a hard sell on anybody about anything. You're just, hello, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're working. We love to, you know, tell you more about it. Yeah, I mean, I, nobody asked any questions. They didn't take any questions. I'm not sure Jay was going to allow that, so. No, he was going to shoot him down. Yeah, he does. He loves a tight ship. He does. He's awesome. I've been to some town meeting where I was like, man, I'm shooting at But yeah, I thought the community, the first event was, was fine. I mean, I wish we had a better turnout. I, the tour did seem to wrap up pretty quickly. I know I was kind of hanging out with the apparatus band then. It was just gone, where the public was gone. In. So, mm -hmm. um, when is our next week for the tour? I know, like we were halfway through the tour, and a lot of people said we're done. Like we've seen enough. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need to see the rest. <laughs> <laughs> what we've seen, we're done. No need to see the rest. Yeah, like like Chief said, though, I think the crowd that was there was mostly already for it. It's too bad we can't have the election to vote on it in the apparatus. But <laughs> I don't think I could talk Carol into that. But that might help. When actually is the next community event? Is there one on the. I don't think we had one before. We don't have some time to waste Yeah, after the feasibility study. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you won't. If it would be valuable before we have. No, I think we want to have something that they can see yeah. next time. Now that you've heard more about it, here's the concepts <laughs> on the boards, and here's more tours. And if you really didn't believe us, come see us. Um, so, do we want to? Should we talk about the geotech mm -hmm. and the survey? Is that? Yep. It wasn't specifically listed, but um, we're thinking we, we presented. For discussion, anyways, and we can bring the amendments to the to the next meeting if you 
in order to get a vote on. Okay. I think if, I think if it's important to move this along and get this work going, I'd say give us green light. And if there was a concern raised by anyone that we didn't have it on as an action item rather than discussion, we'll come back and vote it again. So, so vote on it tonight, and then if it's not, if, if someone is concerned about the, I mean, we do say on our on our um, agenda any other anticipated business that may be come before the committee. And we truly did not get this until yesterday, when we already posted the agenda. So one could argue that we didn't know we were going to need to do this, so otherwise we would have put it on the agenda. So I'd say go ahead and vote on it. And if someone is concerned about that, we can revisit it later. But I think it's important to the committee to decide this is we should take the steps and direct or more here to get the work underway or not or some <coughs> variation of what they presented. Well, that would be great if, if we, we could do it that way. Um, the you know the geotechnical services. It's sort of it's sort of presented as a you know the amount is is for a two day event, but there's a possibility that it may only be one day. I right. saw that. Ron? Yeah. So they're doing seven holes, right? And yeah. it's just a matter of it takes them one or two days. So if we're going to vote on it, I would vote as a not to exceed. Mm -hmm. And if it's you know, and I and, and I also feel that we want the full geotechnical report, not a not a summary memo. Which was, which was also an option. Well, so that, that's what I was going to ask, is that, I mean, are we, do we have a, a decent idea of where the building's going on the site, where this is going to be something that's useful, that maybe we won't have to do as much, I won't say not any, but mm -hmm. as much geotech investigation in the next phase? So I think so, because you've already done the geotech work where the uh, previous location of the addition was going, right? And it just makes sense that, you know, in our additional renovation, we're going in the same direction because we just don't have room to go on the other side of the building. So I think that information is not included in this because you've already have it. But this information, because of the way or the areas that we have available to us to build, you know, I think we can get the information good enough um, for the study to say, yes, there's ledge in this area and it's at a certain depth. And then there's no ledge over here in this area, and that's what we're really looking for. And, um, and also, I think to Steve's point about the full report, that's going to allow us to share that with our structural engineer before you know we get too far down the road, where they can say, yeah, you just need a conventional foundation, which again, knock on wood, is what we're shooting for, um, and we don't need any kind of you know structured slabs or anything like that. So, um, you know, I think we have plenty of information I don't there will be some after the vote you know I mean after the decisions are made and, and things like that where once you pick a site or pick a solution I should say we may want to come back and do some more investigations but that's going to be very targeted towards a specific design that we're working on uh, but for the most part what we've tried to do is it give you a better indication of what the site's all about um, in that area do we have a drawing that shows these seven locations? Uh, no, nope, we're going to send that off to the, the driller when he comes out. Because we we have put this together before we actually started with the existing building. Uh, but what the geotech does have is the work that you did in 2009. So if some of our building is on top of that, then we don't have to worry about it, right? We've got the information. Uh, but the rest of it is important. Because I suspect you'll get questions from the community as well. You know, like, where is the ledge? How does this estimate compare with the going rate of this kind of work? I have no concept of what any of this costs. Um, that was actually one thing that I, I did want to talk about. Um, to me, it's a little bit high. Um, I actually have, I brought a quote from a, a trailer that I got recently on a job. Um, and, you know, the, the layout, the dig safe coordination of you know, getting the job going, 2000 that's more than reasonable. Um, $6,400 for the first day of drilling. Um, one day of trailer cost with a mobilization is probably around 2,500. Um, so that's you know more than more than three, four thousand dollars for one day of a field engineer, unless there's something else included with that, which you know that's more than I cost for a day. Um, additional day of drilling, same thing. It's you know 
two thousand dollars for a driller for a day. You know, usually I, I would assume about fifteen hundred dollars for you know a field engineer, maybe a little bit less. Um, the the geotech report um, again, that's you know more than I would probably charge, especially for what I would consider to be a simple site like this. Um, there's no deep foundations, or at least you know from the surface there there shouldn't be. Um, it should be pretty simple, you know, spread footing type job. So I, I do I do think it's a little bit high, you know, maybe on the order of you know three three to five thousand dollars more than what I would anticipate. Um, however, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't I don't know if that really matters too much. Every dollar counts. That's why yeah, that's why I brought it up. So you know, I just I just did a comparison of what I would you know what I would charge for a job like this. Um, Is this based on? There is limited availability of people on short notice, and that's driving it up, or? Driller costs are going up because of that. Uh, so I'm just curious. Yeah, we only had one response. Um, so this was the one response that we got in Sanborn Head, you know, does a lot of work with our office. Yep. And so, um, I don't know, Steve, what your thoughts are on it as well, but I think for instance, if you said we're going to prove this as a not to exceed, we can certainly go back and raise these concerns with the engineer and have him respond and send you what his response is. Yeah, you know, I think that would be good. Um, you know, another question I had was, was was this the only proposal that we have from them, or do they do they do a more formal proposal where they say, you know, this is what a full geotech report gets you versus what they're referring to as an initial findings. Um, Typically, to me, an initial findings report or memo would be just the data. If there's no interpretation of it, it's just here's your warning logs, here's what we found. You know, do with this what you will. Um, and then, you know, unless they're saying exactly what's included in a, um, in a geotech report, that could be anywhere from their interpretation of what they found, their recommendations for foundations. Um, for us, if, you know, if a full geotech report goes further into construction recommendations, says, you know, here's what you do for shoring, here's, you know, open excavations, um, your trench and your backfill material recommendations, you know, and all that. I'm assuming that's what they mean by, by full geotech, but it would be nice to have some clarification on that, just to say, you know, this is what you get for your 65 foot. Actually, we could send you an example okay. of what, you yeah. know, we, here's a sample. You know, on some other project, right? But here's a sample of the report that we would expect, which is a quote unquote full report. It would definitely have those recommendations um, in terms of like what type of foundations they would recommend. And, you know, if there's any groundwater that's encountered, yep. stuff like that. Um, whether or not you need under drains, things like that. I mean, that's all part of their recommendation. Okay. I would expect that not to be in sort of a data driven, here's where the rock is report. Right. Um, but we'll send you a sample. And we'll go back and ask them if they can sharpen their pencil or if they can explain why um, the fee is what the fee is. <coughs> yeah, you know, and again, I'm just I'm based, you know, I'm basing it off sure. my my experience with it and you know, what my typical job prices would be. That's all. Now, on the flip side, I can tell you we got a really good price in the survey. <laughs> I was I was also going to make a comment on that, that I, I I agree with that. That's a uh, uh, that was a little surprising to us yeah. that they were willing to do it, but apparently they want to work with our office more. So, uh, so there you go. Yeah. Especially right now when so it's hard to, to see. To, 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 I mean, the survey we already had one, so this is to do the. Well, I want. So the question we asked them to do is come out here and, and do the survey. But we already had one to start with, so. Right. So that was done in 2009, and we just want to make sure that, you know, the deed research is the right deed research, we're using the right benchmarks, pins haven't been moved. Um, that's that's the most important piece of it. But you're right, I did send them the 2009. Right, survey. so they're starting from there. They're not going all the way back and doing a complete do-over, are they? I've asked them to. Be so, because it's not good to trust the information you already have, or? Again, just watching every dollar, I'm kind of saying, well, no, we already have yeah, this. No, it's, a good, it's a good question, and you know, some we've I, I've personally been involved with projects where you know, we have a survey that's more than 10 years old or whatever, and somebody just says, all right, well, there's the benchmarks are going off, and that's the survey we're going to go off, and then we find out we're three feet on the next donated no, property. I, I get that, I'm just... <laughs> so I'm just, you know, my thinking about this is, yeah, let's confirm everything that we're doing. Um, what they don't have 
is they don't have all the data points, right? So when somebody goes out there with a transit, they have all these points and everything. And if they had that kind of file, then it would be less time consuming for them to do it. But um, I think what we want them to do is find a, a true monument out there and then work off of it. Because ultimately, this existing condition survey, we're going to be giving it a contractor. And that's how they're laying the building out. I understand why we're doing it. I understand what the, why it's critically important. Okay. But I'm just watching every dollar to pay to have it done all over again yeah. for the very beginning just feels frustrating. Sure. I, I just think it's because of the time that's gone by and, and what may have happened out there in the meantime. Okay. Well, actually, in, in well, what are you, I mean, basically, you're going to own it. You know, so and then there's that. <laughs> if you, um, if, you know, if you're if you're going off to somebody else's report, and like you said, things yeah. go wrong, you really yeah. want to be able to yeah. put your own stuff on. I think I would. I think I would agree with that plan. I think there's some value in having our design team over the survey, um, and taking responsibility for it rather than adopting one that the, from our previous project. And for you know, for five grand, it's probably a reasonable number. But. Uh, <coughs> you I don't disagree overall. I'm just you know, I'm trying to be <laughs> no, I, make, I keep it. everybody on no, point about you know I'm glad to hear the chief talking about ways they can make the building different based on what he's learned and so you know people are going to be looking at us like are you being careful at every single point and I'm just asking the question. I'm not saying no. I wouldn't vote for it. I'm just yeah. want to no. be. I can I can speak from experience on, on two different jobs where we did rely on old survey because. It was just a, it was a cost decision, you know, going out okay. home, almost like this is, and on the you know on those jobs there were errors in the previous survey that cost more than what the cost of the initial survey would have been I to fix guess the that. issues. So you guys do some of this more yeah, than I, know, I, I do, know, but I, right. I, I, we want to separate, we want to separate ourselves hot. from everything that was done. Yeah. Yeah. I do get that. <laughs> That's all about my ability. I do get that. Um, yeah. So I, I guess. Uh, I guess that kind of makes sense. But with, with the survey, you, you mentioned that they're going to establish control points that we'll use for the, for the project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think, I think on the Geotech one, it would be, we can still vote on it tonight, but it would be good to have an actual proposal attached to it rather than. Sure. Because I think just the Well, we'll get something written up. We'll get some explanation. And I think there. some breakdown of, yeah. Yeah, of their cost versus okay. the so they don't do the drilling themselves. They're they're subcontracting that drilling. Well, that, that must add price cost, right? Well, that's they're I think that's what there's, 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 there's a markup. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, to what you said, you know, on just a, get on the breakdown that between the two. Put out, you know, typically it would be a breakdown between this is your subcontractor cost and this is what your engineering costs are. What kind of time do we need? Like we vote on this on day one. At what point does that start delaying the schedule? We're not going to get we we're not going to get any of this information until the study's done. But does that affect December 1st or December 17th? Or at what point does this start running into the schedule? Because if, if we're just getting a number that doesn't seem to jive with anything, we don't have a clear breakdown, I, I don't know that I'd be comfortable voting for it tonight. I mean, you're probably over a month before drivers even getting out here anyway, even if we approved it tonight, is my guess. We're going into January now. Yeah. So. yeah, so that, I mean, you know, like anything else, we try to get this. this doesn't sound like it, but we tried to get it as quick as we could, um, just because everybody's so crazy busy right now. And so my only concern is if I call the surveyor and say, you know, we're going to hold off on this, then we may not be getting this back for even longer. Because right now, if I call them tomorrow, they've pretty much said it's going to be four weeks. And my other concern with that is if it starts snowing, all bets are off. When it comes to the survey, uh, do we well, sorry, do we, we need the two together, or can we do this? No, you can you can separate them. And yeah, so, it's, you know, I think the critical thing, frankly, from my perspective, is the survey. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the one that we've all said is reasonable, I guess. Um, and then the second one is the geotech, which, you know, we know there's ledge out there because you blasted something. Um, the only question I would have is when the report is complete and somebody says, "Well, did you go out and do any more explorations?" The answer would be no. Now, having said that, if the town has a backhoe or anything like that, you know, we could go back out there and just dig a couple of five foot test pits, you know, and not necessarily have a geotech report, 
but no, hey, we hit something we can't dig through versus. I, I, I had brought that up previously to, to Matt, I think, I forget mm -hmm. during which meeting it was, and he said that the, the town's equipment is not not in good enough shape to be digging into, into rock or trying to scratch lead or anything okay. like that. So, um, but I, 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 I'm not trying to say that we that we shouldn't do the borings. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a geotech, obviously. I, I think it's very important to have it done, um, and it can create major issues later on if you don't have it. My concern was just kind of the overall cost. Sure. And, and I think, you know, in terms of the feasibility study, we know the ledge is there. We have some idea of the depth of the ledge right now to at least quantify mm -hmm. ledge removal mm -hmm. in the feasibility study. And we'll know that there is some open-ended item that something might come out of the geotech investigation that adds some, some cost to the foundation. Possibly. Right, and it's not like we're going to the town vote with the project cost on December 15th. Um, because I think what the geotech does is it gives you that extra level of comfort that your site numbers are more accurate. So by not having the geotech information, you know, the safe thing to do is just assume the ledge is there. Uh, because then if it's not there, the price goes down. Um, but you don't want to get into a situation at this stage of the game where you haven't sort of prepared for the worst. You hoped for the best and the best didn't happen and so now all of a sudden you're short, you know. So. I think that's really what it's all about. And, yeah, because um, yeah, I, I, I think the other thing is that if we vote on it tonight, I doubt we're getting the geotech information back before the 21st. No, absolutely not. Anyway, no. so the feasibility study is probably going without the geotech information, whether we vote on this time or not. Right, but the sooner we get it, the better off sure. we'll all be. Yes. Because if once the study is done and the holidays are over, we're going to want to hit the ground running because we have a very tight schedule to get these documents done to a point where they're either estimated with 100% CD estimates, construction document estimates, or actually bid. So, you know, in my world, it's just like, the sooner you get it done, the better. Um, I understand your questions, and we can certainly respond to those. Um, so that maybe next week you could vote on it. Right. No, me. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, I was. You'd be the only one here. I did yeah. that again. <laughs> I was, was going to suggest if there, maybe we have them submit a, a formal proposal and then we can vote on it on the one we meet on the first. Yeah. Well, but maybe we could break this up, right? I mean, could we vote on this number as a not to exceed number? And like we did with, I think, some other fee that we approved, we as a committee voted to give the two of us the right to, to proceed with the actual proposal based upon a not to exceed number, right? So instead of having to get the committee together to approve the revised proposal, yep. we could vote tonight to not to exceed 2200 or 22,000. <laughs> I like 2200. Yeah, 2200 would be nice. <laughs> and then when we get the full proposal, we could take a look at it, maybe call Chris or whatever, and decide whether to proceed with it or not without having to get the whole committee back together, yeah. which isn't going to happen until the 1st. Sure. Um, I think, I mean, I, I'm still uncomfortable with the 22,000. Like, I just, I know nothing about it, and I feel like this is just high. And I know that one vote's not going to matter, but I feel like we need to shrink that number a little bit before we do anything with it. Well, I think I think what they're saying is, is we, we, can, we can still shrink that number. It's just that it, it can't be higher than that. We, we don't have to authorize a... Um, you know, we, don't, we still don't have to authorize them to go ahead and do it if they come back and say, no, we can't reduce that, correct? Yeah, I guess that's my question. If they come back and say, no, this is the number deal, then are we then committed to say we have to? Well, if we can't get anyone else to propose on it, then we're kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I would say, I would say, no, we're not committed to proceeding with it, right? I mean, you're you're just giving some committee members the power to... Right, and it's been said that if they look, if it comes back and it's 22,000, then we we have to wait to get back to the committee to vote on it, essentially, right? But, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm not surprised to see high geotech numbers, especially with the season that we're going into, with the market the way it is. You know, we may very well find that this is a reality, and they may, you know, take 10% off to be a good customer or client, but... <laughs> Right. And it might any, just be the reality of the market that we're working in right now. Any any reduction that we're going to get in isn't going to be ten thousand dollars. It's it's going to be you know a couple of thousand dollars. Um, and 
again, I'm grateful to, if you can get a reduction <laughs> to place point, you know, well, every dollar counts. About. Absolutely, that's a table or something, or you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, and it might only be one day of drilling anyway, which is like five thousand dollars. Um, you know, in, in reality, we know the rock's there, we know what kind of rock it is. You don't need to continuously core, you just have to kind of drill down and tag it and see where it is. Right. And quite frankly, the, yeah. the design that we have that Jason and I have been working on in the back of the site, we're thinking of raising the grades anyway. Yeah. So we've got enough information in terms of like that piece of it. It's the other one that we just want to, you know. So, you know, let's, um, We'll go back and talk to them, but if you wanted to approve it not to exceed, it certainly won't get exceeded. And we'll definitely check with you because, like you said, the drill is not going out there tomorrow. Right. You know, um, even if they scheduled it for three weeks from now, that gives you plenty of time to get their responses, take a look at this, and then say, you know what, we're just not comfortable with it or something. I don't yeah. know. Um, Another point, too, to, to, to think about is this, this is good information also for you ever thinking about geothermal yep. and you know where that may go and what those uh, that, that's that's a drilling operation what what will they encounter and that, and that we have, we're not that at that point yet yeah but it's you know Ron talked about it under the sustainability right the more solid the rock is yeah the better it is so if we hit fractured rock or we hit some kind of shale rock or something like that Right, but I mean the the, no. the geotech borings. You're only gonna, you know, you're only gonna drill 20, 30 feet with those, you know, anyways into the rock. You're not gonna, you know, right. the geotherms are gonna go 500 feet, right. um, most likely. Right, and we, you know, at the meeting on the first, we'll have a lot of information on yeah. what it takes to do a geothermal test well. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. But if you end up going with it, you've already got one one, yeah. one well drilled. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, I guess all, all that being yeah. said, I mean, I, I think if, if we can agree as a committee to sort of, uh, I guess, you know, give Kevin and I the authority to review a, a revised proposal. I think Chris should be involved. Yeah. And Chris, sure. Yeah. And or Kevin and Chris, I don't need to be involved either. Um, you know, a not to exceed number of say twenty two thousand and then hope that the, the the detailed proposal and the numbers come back with a good faith effort to reduce the number and then we can get going rather than having to wait till December. Um, I think that would be beneficial to the project. Yeah. That's that's something I'd be willing to get behind anyway. So yeah. sure. Do you do you happen to know which um which <coughs> company that they plan on proposal with? Didn't, but I'll ask them to tell us in their proposal. They may come back and say it's either going to be this person, this person. This yeah, person. usually I, I, yeah, I would never commit in a, in a proposal because <laughs> things change like that. Exactly, and availability and everything yep. else. So. Okay, so maybe we'll vote to give myself and Chris mm -hmm. authority to review it, okay. not to exceed twenty-two thousand dollars. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And um, if it comes back before I'm back on the 23rd, you could have um, Todd Lindmark, the acting town administrator, he could sign something on the town's behalf. Okay. Right. So if we're okay with it, send it to Send it to Todd. I don't know if I have his email address. T. Lindmark at Chief knows how to find it. Now you do. Now you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then uh, make a motion to, or ask for a motion to vote on the $5,500 for the survey costs. So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 So the surveyor, I think, can move forward. Thank you very much. Yeah, we appreciate it. Okay. Uh, I think, is there anything else anybody wants to discuss feasibility study related or? Uh, just just one update. Um, I did have a conversation with Matt in regard to uh, the temporary living quarters or the, the modified living quarters, and there was there was some <coughs> work that he had done previously, more about on, on a modular home type of uh, company. Uh, he gave me some information that we'll, we'll sort of pick up again and, and, and track down. Um, 
I think it, it sort of moves it into a little bit more from, from a trailer company to a, a modular home company, which is a you know, modular building is, is a, a certain type of procurement under that master law, which we've done before. So, um, but just to say, you know, that that is continuing on, um, looking into, into that, and, and he gave me some information that uh, I actually didn't have before, as far as some things that you guys may have discussed in the past. So it was, it was a good conversation. Um, Steve, on that subject, I actually had a question here to ask. Have we determined that there are no other temporary facilities in town that we should be considering? I know, I know Chief is strong on we need to be serving from this location because the, the service times are so great. But, I mean, I, is there a DPW facility that we should be considering? Uh, if, no, I, I don't know. I'm just <coughs> talking out loud. I think that was my understanding is that was looked at when back in 2014, 15, whatever. Let's move everybody out if, and move them to the to the DPW. The problem with that is the DPW garage is undersized. So where do we put all that equipment if now we're going to put trucks in it? And where do we put all the people? All right, so I guess um, we're also we also got approval for a new salt shed for the funds last night. Okay just about through the planning board process to get that done so we can be out to bid to replace that. It's going to take a slightly bigger footprint than the one does now. So I just don't... So after the first storm, the salt shed will be empty and we can use the salt shed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, I guess continuing to think out loud, I mean, if the temporary facility is in the way on the site, which we don't know, but these guys, our team's looking at, you know, could we put a temporary facility like on the old town hall parking lot? We do, maybe. I mean, we do, we have been over the years renting that for parking, for the, but right now that's not getting a lot of takers because people are still not taking the train. Um, I think you need to talk with Rich McCarthy about what we could actually put there on a temporary basis. Um, are you thinking putting people down there versus? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm. I, I guess I'm thinking about the conversation about the more stuff you have on site and you're phasing, the longer and more complicated your construction process is. <coughs> so if, you know, if if we could take this temporary facility that we're we seem to be going down the road of, and instead of putting it on site and working around it, could we put it across the street and serve the same basic purpose but be out of the way? I think unless your vehicles could go with you, you'd have a separation of the people that you need to be responding from the stuff they need to respond in or with. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, anyway, I was wondering. There's some functional <laughs> issues with it. No, <laughs> that's, that's the response time, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would think that the old town hall might be a great place for contractor storage and stuff like that while we're in construction because that just makes the site more e easily used for. The actual like the way you think. We've done other jobs where we've given given the contractor an offsite storage, mm -hmm. and so it's right in the documents. Well, so, so maybe the question evolves into, you know, what other town resources do we have to support this project? Well, I know the NFPA mandates a, a shoot time, the time from dispatch to physically driving the apparatus of 60 seconds for medicals and 80 seconds for How fast can you guys run? So we run from the trailer on <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> keep that in consideration. And then How do you feel about uh one of us put in a on the <laughs> crosswalk sign or a police detail at the yeah. road that probably isn't feasible to keep them separated. Who owns the property right across the street next to the Dunkin' Donuts? It's privately owned. It's, it's, the, same, it's the same people that own the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. yeah. Like and then now that's right? the MBTA lot. Yeah. Right so when the lions sell Christmas trees, they're renting it from like. I'm, I guess I don't. I don't know what the arrangement is, but. Do we have a good relationship with the church? Yes. So I guess my question evolves into: it's probably worth understanding what other resources we have available to us to support this project. If you could list the feasibility study, maybe it'll impact. You know, if we can put all the construction material in the church parking lot, or. In, at the old time hall parking lot, that might be good to know. Would, would Pete likely have any recollection of the conversation that I guess happened back when this was, when, when it was like, let's move to DPW? I heard 
it was a million dollars to retrofit DPW to move everything there, but that's, that's I could be completely wrong about that. Maybe he recollects a little more, or has, you guys have some materials yeah, that will... I've heard the same thing in discussions with Pete, and like when they did that, that was one of the things, they were like, no, to try to build on site, because it was the cost of doing that. Wait, but there might be details about what would have had to have happened to some other site, call it DPW, to make it viable, that we can at least drop into this report and say, this is, we haven't fact-checked this since then, but this is what we knew then, and probably is not less expensive than it was then. Yeah, and I would argue it's the same thing as the cost estimate. Somebody's going to ask us, why are you spending money on a temporary facility? Why don't you just, you know, and you're working around it on site, why don't you just move the DPW? I'd be good at it. Yeah. I can to be able to rule it out. No. It's, it's worth noting, and I, I, I don't want to be pessimistic, but there is a strong possibility that what we're saying is a temporary facility is a 20-year facility because it's happened now twice. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just putting it out there. Like I know we're saying this is temporary. The reality is, whatever it is, could end up being for the next 20 years. Unfortunately, like I, I don't. Again, I don't want to sound pessimistic. We're going to do all we can to make this work and to make it happen. But like that is a distinct possibility. There's a track record. Yeah, it's not necessarily it's realistic. Yeah, it is. Sure. Uh, so I just want to keep that in mind. Like, you know, you know it's. I also think it's important to move forward with that facility in conjunction with these designs and not kind of wait because there's obviously going to be lead time and we know that it's clearly necessary and it was important to me at the beginning of, of the process and it remains so now. So I think it, it does need to be kind of. At least it higher on the priority yeah. path. These things aren't off the shelf. You don't you don't hook right. up to them and pull them in. They, they're all you know custom made. I mean, yeah. one that I had presented happened to be one that was was available and being on, a, on another project that didn't necessarily 100% work here. But um, you know, they're, they, they, like I said, they're not off the shelf. It's it's you know, it's made up specifically for the project. And then the last thing, I think I mentioned this at our last meeting, but I think it would be great to have a list of stations we visited, neighboring stations, their age and, and size, just for comparison, right? I mean, if we could point to our five neighbors and say the oldest station is three years old or the Medfield is five years old, right? That's just another little feather on our cap to say our over. 30 year old station is. Uh, to the chief's point from last meeting, I think it's important to take into account the total size of all the stations in that community because this yeah. community has one for all of its equipment and that's not necessarily the same for all the other communities. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important thing to show. I don't know who's working on that. If no one is, let's figure it out. Well, you could probably pull your, if you knew what. You know, we want to just pull your, your counterparts and say, tell me, you know, cost to build, square footage, number of stations you have, you know, population, you're built, just kind of come to mind. I think the only thing that would be tricky is, I don't know if the permit be able to share in that particular area, because they were full public safety complexes, the fire site won't be parsed out by itself. You know, it's going to be okay. It was a 40,000 square foot, both police and fire, and there's not a cost breakdown specific to just the fire side. Dispatch fire, everything. One package. Um, we could still probably do a correlation of cost per square foot and then see, okay, the fire size this many square feet. So it, we did a, we did grab some of that stuff for the uh, review yeah. last December, so we have a couple. Yeah. It should have midfield, I think, in there. And I don't. I'll have to go back and look. Yeah. Midfield Yeah, and I guess too. I'm thinking of it more. I mean, these guys would be great for the cost per square foot information, which we probably need to go far beyond our local neighborhood. I'm thinking just. I'm thinking it would be another data point where it's clear that we're behind the curve on updating our life safety buildings. I can't imagine there's too many of our neighbors that are working out of a station that's as old as the one that we're in. Um, 
there are none of our contiguous neighbors that are in. I think the oldest one that Boy County touches us in Medway is still nowhere near as do a lot of They have multiple facilities too. They have two. Yeah. is about 20 years old, but even with that, it's still far, <laughs> far cry from what we're currently in. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Medfields is brand new. Venice's is fully renovated, <coughs> pretty much. And, yeah. I, I think that'd be a good yeah. list to have in there. You know. In fact, that was brought up at town meeting last night, I think. It's all brought up, hey, all these towns have new fire stations, what are we doing? <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah. That was before I spoke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll talk. <laughs> um, anything else before we get to the minutes? Approval of minutes. Okay. Uh, the next agenda item. Please consider approval of the minutes. October 27th. A motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 27th. So moved. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That's before we adjourn. Okay. That's for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All right. Anyone in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're adjourned.